a little bit about uh, Mr. Leeds. Mr. Leeds has over 10 years experience in the IT industry, specializing in cyber threat intelligence, infrastructure and cloud security domains. In the most recent years, he was instrumental in several critical large scale projects covering both design and implementation across Asia Pacific. So without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Leeds. Over to you, Mr. Leeds. Thank you. Let me just request control. Okay, let me just share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen, guys? Okay, uh, not yet, let's. Uh, not live, yet, let's. Yeah. One second. Um, All right, let me stop sharing, then you can take over now. Okay. Okay, let's share back. All right, thank you. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. just start. Okay, so first of all, hi everyone. Thank you for having me today um, for this session today. My name is Lip Ali Khan. I'm actually a senior system engineer with Recorder Future. And today I'll be presenting a little bit about providing visibility into the current landscape due to COVID-19. Um, that can also help you basically to secure your remote workforce against such threats as well. As well. So, so one of the key things that basically we, we like to talk about is basically the world has changed over the past few years uh, and especially in the way information is being used and transferred. Um, things like cloud computing, software as a service is basically becoming the, the norm going forward. And we've unfortunately, uh, unfortunately due to COVID-19, many of us are working from home and we are basically leveraging a lot of different tools like say mobile devices, BYOD, and a lot of these actually changes the way we work and operate. And basically this will actually move forward as well. So after this pandemic, uh, major operations, businesses will actually change the way they work because they realize that uh, some of these ways could actually be beneficial for the organization as well. Um, but unfortunately, as we change and innovate the way we do things, it is the same with the threat landscape. And it's getting tougher basically to stay ahead since the bad actors are now also getting more sophisticated. They are basically more well-funded and this causes us to see more and more targeted attacks while actually, and, and they are also actually using various methods that actually changes based off their particular target environments. So this is where basically threat intelligence can actually come in to provide a better understanding. Uh, basically, not only are we there to provide the understanding, we are here to also complement the traditional tools that uh, organizations are using as well. So like say Endpoint, EDR, SIEM. Uh, and when you're having a real understanding of what's going on around you, it basically gives you the ability to react to such threats in your environment in a better in a, in a better timely manner as well. So basically you see what may potentially happen and it's easier for you to react to certain situations as well. So moving on, uh, with that said, the emergence of cor the coronavirus COVID-19, as we all call it now, uh, it or originated in late December 2019. And personally for me, I was having some very good travel plans that was actually cut in half because of it. So this basically brought a lot of chaos in many different ways, uh, personal lives and also economic sectors as well. And when we look at all these economic sectors, some of the examples may potentially be like say finance, manufacturing and healthcare. So I'm basically just naming a few. And however, because of this, we start to see a lot of new cybersecurity threats. So basically these are berries of COVID-19 team fishing lures. So like what the presenter before me actually said, um, phishing is basically like a type of social engineering. So basically it's often used by, and it's not new, it's basically used to try to steal credentials or steal like say bank information, user accounts on your particular social media website and stuff like that. So we start to see more and more of this kind of uh, uh, particular URLs rising during this period and it's more related to COVID-19 as well. So um, primarily a lot of these attackers 
they are basically trying to claim that they have attachments that's containing more information about COVID-19, so maybe like cures, uh, uh, masks that they're trying to sell and stuff like that. So they're trying to lower you to come in and then put in your information and then that's where they steal all this information from you. So if you look at a graph here, we actually show you that this is where we start to see that rise, that gradual rise as well. So if I, if I look into that particular graph and one of the things I'm jumping into the platforms, I want to show you something. So we, we actually have ways that we can actually query on our platform, our trade intelligence platform to showcase certain things that's happening in a point in time. And we can actually go back to the, uh, basically about like 10 years since the start of our company as well. And in the past six months, even if, and we, and when we type like say COVID-19 disease and stuff like this, so anything that's related to cyber attack, we start to see the huge number and the rise is basically fishing attempts on the number one category on the top there. And then ransomware for following up and then like say business business emails being compromised, credentials, malicious codes and so on and so forth. But when we look at phishing attempts, we, we start to see challenges as well. So only in June, uh, May 2020, we also see Microsoft actually warned that there could be a potential uh, phishing campaign uh, that's targeting, the that attackers are actually targeting. So if you go into that detail, you can actually see that, hey, uh, a phishing campaign is actually underway and uh, attackers are trying to install, like say a net support manager, basically a remote access tool to actually gain access into your particular environment itself. So this is where it becomes challenging because they are starting to use the current tragic situation, I would say, in the pandemic situation environment that we are in and actually try to attempt to actually fake people, normal people out of money, information and, and stuff like that. So this becomes a challenge for us as well. So going into that aspect, let me just show something that we actually do on our side itself. So what we do is we actually start to query everywhere through a lot of variety of sources. And I'll talk about how we actually capture all these sources later on as well. So we start to actually query and then we find all these different domain lures as well. So uh, a, a lot of this comes into a factor where we start to see things that's coming up now within the past during the pandemic period. And then we display this information clear and concisely so that you can actually see everything through a single pane of glass. In our terms, we call this an intelligence card. And what we did is we actually created rules based off the COVID-19. And this actually helps uh, people that's using the platform to actually see what's going on. And for our perspective, we actually see that this is actually a domain that was created recently. So it was last referenced in uh, March 13th. Uh, and then the latest use is actually June 25. Uh, we, we actually tie a particular race rule behind this. If you want, you can also do like say a lookup domain and you can see this is still like in a way currently active. And then all the different subdomains in terms of these factors and stuff like that actually comes into the equation as well. Um, a little bit more detail about the rule itself. It's basically it gives organizations the ability to pe better prepare themselves. And we have two kinds of rules. One is like say uh, a, a particular domain is actually used in a malicious activity or a particular domain has verified, has a has malicious intent in based off our technical research done by our research group. And the domain is recently seen in the past 30 days. So this is where we actually classify in a higher category itself. The second one is where we basically see that this could be potentially like say, uh, not trusted, it's a suspicious activity, it's an untrusted source and it's a reference link to it. So with this information and with just these rules that we created and we start to query out, we actually saw a big rise in all these domain lows. So in April 1st, when we triggered the rules, we actually saw 700 domains on the malicious, the high side. Um, by April 15, the number has grown and it's bigger now. So by April 15, you actually saw 4,200 domains actually created. Uh, the third one, we actually of suspicious rules. So this will potentially go into the malicious category as well. So this is where we actually help you in terms of understanding the MITRE framework as well. So aside from that, let me just go back to our slide. So the challenge is when we start to see all this information, uh, a lot of times people ask, how do we gather all this information as well? So at Record of Future, what we do is actually collect from a lot of different sources and we pull all these sources from uh, a, a wide variant. So they, we actually pull this not only from the internet, from the web, uh, we actually pull this from like say the dark webs itself. So we go into like say hackers forums that we know they are there. Uh, a good example would be like say uh, Genesis store. So basically where they sell like, uh, potential bots that already are attached to normal 
individuals where they're accessing certain things and then they'll sell you the, the passwords and, and so on and so forth so that you can exploit and you can utilize it for monetary wise as well. Um, we, we collect it from our technical sources. We do have our internal uh, sources as well. We work with other security partners and we collect all this information. And the number that we have now is we actually have more than 900,000 sources. So we gather all this information and what we do is we actually process this with machine learning and natural language processing so that we can structure this, analyze this and basically deliver this in real time to our customers or to anyone to actually consume all this information. So uh, you can actually, uh, our customers can actually consume this through our mo mobile, uh, through API integrations, through a portal mode itself. And they can also ask for, let's say, analysts on demand. So if, if you feel that there's something that you want us to take a look at, you can actually engage us on an ad hoc basis to come in to actually do certain, like say, threat actor profiling on a particular threat actor, or maybe just to understand how certain things are going on in your environment. So that's where we can actually get our analysts and demands to come in and assist you as well. Um, moving on from that, the other thing is once we gather all this intelligence, the, the challenge that we see also is when we look at pandemic monitoring, we start to see a lot of different use cases that we recommend in terms of uh, monitoring and ensuring that your environment is better. And a lot of it comes into, like say a different perspective is we, we look at the party monitoring. So when people say the party monitoring, yes, there are use cases, but we also have a different use case behind it. So you want to monitor basically uh, your partners, your suppliers, and this gives you the ability to better understand what's happening on the ground and what's happening around you. And let me just see if I have one. Yep. So basically when we do a query, we can actually search what's happening around the environment around you. So basically in, uh, in United Kingdom now, uh, basically an airline has joined a legal challenge to, so to ramp up specific things on flight. So if you notice here, you can actually see 30% of capacity is because due to COVID-19 planning. So they're actually planning against around that. So how, how do they want to ramp up flights? What's the capacity on the plane and stuff like that? So it brings you down to that stage to help you understand what's going on around you. And if you have your suppliers, you actually key in this information here. So you can actually put in like, say, so I, I made it very generic. So you can actually filter down to your supplier's name. You can filter down to your partner's name, uh, to different organizations that you're doing collaborations with. So even in just doing this filter in the past 24 hours, you can actually see North Korea actually closed down uh, one of their third largest city because of a new COVID-19 outbreak. So this is where you can actually go down to a granular standpoint to understand your environment and the things and the people you're working with or collaborating with and actually help you to actually secure that landscape in, 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 in part of that. So yeah. So going back into that, the, the, the next one is basically facility monitoring. So understanding what's going on in, 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 in a particular remote branch office or uh, where your organization is located, what's the physical aspect, what is there a particular lockdown? And this also comes into where global awareness also comes into that picture as well. So global awareness is where you want to look at certain things around you in terms of information that's being provided. You want to query not only on a technical aspect side of it, uh, on the threat landscape part of it, but also for the sake of your employees. So uh, typical things that they're utilizing, you want to query on their username, you want to query on certain things, uh, generally how they're using it. So this comes into the different kind of things that we provide you. So. Uh, uh, the, the beauty about this is basically having intelligence help you make a better and concise decision moving forward as well. And I want to touch on one thing and I'll elaborate a little bit more about it as well because I know a lot of people were talking about phishing during this session. So I, I want to talk about vulnerabilities as well. So the, the challenge is when we look at vulnerabilities um, in this current state, uh, I would recommend basically monitoring your remote access tech stack. So this could be like say such applications that you're using Citrix, Zoom, Confluence, Slack. So all of these are the type of things that we're using because a lot of our workforce are now at home and they're trying to access office. So that's why we want to prioritize all these things and basically monitor them in that aspect itself. So going into that, a lot of the challenge comes into it is there's a lot of vulnerabilities in terms of that aspect. So if, even if you look at say common vulnerabilities over the years, we see a huge grow in vulnerabilities and vulnerabilities basically is something where we say it's a weakness that can be exploited by a particular threat actor. So when in order for us to classify it, we actually see or we actually talk about two types of vulnerabilities that record a future. And what we talk about is basically 
if an application uh, application has been exploited before, uh, they're utilizing this particular system weakness to exploit and actually do something, uh, or if the vulnerability is a risk but has not been exploited. So a good example that I will use is basically to use this one. So this vulnerability is basically a vulnerability on Cisco AnyConnect. So uh, secure mobility for, for Windows clients. So we have seen this exploited in the wild uh, and it's actively being cited. So over the past like uh, over the past week or so. So that's why we actually triggered specific risk rules behind it as well. Uh, you can we can always go into the incidents, but I won't go into so much detail. And we also throw in all the different historical rules that were triggered as well. So if you go down into the details here, we also notice that the CVSS score, so the common vulnerabilities typically when you go to the website, they have a, a risk score from like say one to 10 and 6.5 is theoretically high on the high side. Um, and then we got nine and 10, that's where it's vulnerability, they recommend a high patch and stuff like that. But the challenge is if you want to do uh, effective patch management, you want to actually prioritize in your organization, uh, you should prioritize on things that are exploitable. So that's where getting the insights become also very valuable. And on our side, if you notice, we actually rated this as 99 because we saw this was exploited recently, but on CVSS, the scores were basically 6.5. So if you go down to details, we can actually show you more, more of the context of the indicators as well. So the other vulnerabilities related to this, the different hash types, what are the technologies that uh, are being utilized and also the different products that are affected by this vulnerability as well. So, and the, the key thing on, and the key expect is to also provide you the visibility of the threat actor or the particular malware that's involved in this scenario as well. So this is where you can actually see this is a flat line is a particular threat actor and so on and so forth. So if you go into that detail uh, in terms of the vulnerability aspect, we also want to look at the current remote tech stack that we see. And a good example for me is to use the common one that people are actually using at home. Uh, they're using to communicate with their other employees. They're communicating with other business. They're sharing information and this becomes a challenge. So a good one would be Zoom. So in, even in Singapore, we do have like say masquerades, people actually joining uh, schools because the schools in Singapore were actually utilizing Zoom at one point to actually conduct their classes and they were actually doing certain things or asking certain students to do certain things that was not why and I would not say that in the call. So that's where you can actually on a high level see an overview the different types of uh, remote tech sets and it's always been there. It's not that uh, now we are actually calling out the vulnerability. It's just that this when you have majority of your workers actually based at home and you want to actually secure that, that's where you should actually secure on that particular tech stack. And this is where we are recommending securing this ones are the best one to go approach first. So prioritize on this particular ones moving forward would be a good approach as well. So if you notice even Zoom, if you talk about Zoom, you can actually click on that detail. You can actually go into more details about it and then we can analyze a particular report about Zoom as well. So this is where you can actually go into Microsoft Teams and then go into more details. So the different part of it is basically we also can see the different access and the vulnerability that's tied to all these different solutions. So we can actually categorize it and we can show you the different vulnerabilities in that level of a graph for, for, for easy consumptions as well. So going back to it, one of the key things that we look is we basically assist you in that, that intelligence gathering and the challenge behind it is because when we pull information from a lot of different sources, the what you actually see is you, you don't only consume it in one one language and we actually consume it for deep, deep analysis across a wide number of uh, languages. So in, in, that includes Russia, uh, China and so on and so forth. So all the different countries. So when we process information, we query information, we search for information, we help you basically come into that conclusion and then we utilize that same natural language processing to, to make a concise decision in real time. So the other challenge that we see also is basically we, we come up with certain recommendations to combat this attack. So the first key one is basically when you have more of your uh, users now working from home, the, the challenge is basically to have uh, your IT security teams in your organization to be more well documented for plans, for backups, especially for those applications and tools that they're using at home. So uh, moving forward, 
this should be the way to move forward. So to prioritize the way access is being granted, the different type of tools, uh, applications that's being utilized, and the, a good recommendation is to secure that moving forward in terms of that particular front itself. Um, the other one is uh, like what I talked about earlier was the tele, uh, telework applications. So this needs to be uh, basically prioritized in terms of matching configurations and basically to ensure that all of this is going forward. Even if you're doing a POC or this kind of uh, application, it's good to on the be on the know-how and to understand that if you want to adopt, example, Zoom, what are the current vulnerabilities? Uh, is that something that I want to take on aside from maybe uh, Microsoft Teams. So this way you can also do a, a good side by side comparison before you actually adopt a particular service or solution as well. Uh, the next one is also to help you monitor. So the key thing is you also want to monitor uh, VPN activities coming from locations as well. So because now with majority of a workforce coming from home, it's actually in a way easier for you to do a geolocation to actually see if any of these like say traffic, if majority of your workers are based in Malaysia or in Indonesia or in Singapore, then you can also start to monitor if there's any suspicious VPN traffic coming from other locations as well. So this helps you to actually do like say a geo lockdown on your perimeter devices and it helps you basically secure the access in terms of who's actually accessing those resources in your organization as well. Uh, the other thing is, of course, the, the with the increase of phishing attempts and social en engineering attacks in this current period and state, we highly recommend that you actually secure your tele, uh, telework. So basically also educate your users too. So uh, tell them that, oh, if you see this kind of information, you see this kind of webs, you see this kind of uh, things being utilized, the best approach is basically to actually uh, educate the users and by educating those users, you're telling them, hey, be more aware of what you're clicking if you're going to social media. So even in the in the example that I used earlier about that Facebook site, uh, that the Facebook domain, you, you can actually see that, that that particular domain was not legitimate and it's actually a, a reference link is a domain duo and people would think, hey, this is coming from Facebook, click on it, key my credentials and then, hey, bam, you lost your social uh, account access to Facebook, for example. So this is where the best practice actually comes into play, educating your users to ensure that when they utilize certain things, even from their, their, their personal needs, they are also locked down and secure and stuff like that. So moving forward, it's the best approach on that front as well. So uh, with that, uh, I think I, I, I've come to the end of my presentation. So if you have any questions or any stuff like that, feel free to reach out to me and then uh, I'll reach out to Clemens and then we can actually talk in a different discussion in terms of that aspect as well. Hi, Clement. Hello. Hey, yes, let's. Thank you. Thanks a yes. lot for that wonderful presentation. So. Uh,